In this video, we're going to cover the bundle of rights and the four governmental controls in real property. Hi folks, I'm Trevor Hubbard and I'm an adjunct professor at the University of San Diego, a senior review appraiser at the United States Navy and Marine Corps. I'm a national director at the Appraisal Institute, what's up Region 7, and I hold the MAI, SRA, and AI GRS designations. Prince and I want to reach the largest audiences possible, so if you could hit the like button at the bottom of your screen to show your support, we would be ever so grateful. In this first section, we're going to cover the bundle of rights in real property. The bundle of rights is a metaphor to represent the real property rights in land. Before we can discuss the bundle of rights, though, we first must discuss the concept of real property which is defined in the Uniform Standards of Professional Appraisal Practice, or USPAP for short, as the interests, benefits, and rights inherent in the ownership of real estate. In an appraisal, a particular set of real property interests are what are being valued, not the real estate. These interests or rights in real estate are referred to as an estate, which is defined in the Dictionary of Real Estate Appraisal as a right or interest in property. There are many rights in real property, including but not limited to the right to possession, the right to transfer, the right to lease, the right to mortgage, the right to improve, and the right to do nothing at all. As I'm sure my family members will confirm, the right to do nothing at all is definitely my favorite. It just kind of speaks to me. The rights that I just mentioned are only a small example of all of the rights that can potentially exist. Now, I want you to imagine all of these individual rights in land as sticks. When these sticks or rights are combined, a bundle of rights in land is created, hence the name. When a private citizen possesses all of the potential rights in real property, that complete bundle of rights is what is known as Fee Simple Estate, or Fee Simple Interest. The Fee Simple Estate is defined in the Dictionary of Real Estate Appraisal as absolute ownership unencumbered by any other interest or estate, subject only to the limitations imposed by the governmental powers of taxation, eminent domain, police power, and escheat. These sticks or rights can be transacted in the marketplace. These rights have potential value and can be appraised. Over time, these sticks or rights in land can be separated or reassembled. When these sticks or rights are removed from the fee simple interest, one or more partial interest or fractional interest are created. A partial interest is defined in the Dictionary of Real Estate Appraisal as divided or undivided rights in real estate that represent less than the whole, i.e. a fractional interest, such as a tenancy in common, easement, or life interest. The U.S. Constitution guarantees private enjoyment of these rights subject to limitations, which brings us to the next section of this video. In this second section, we are going to cover the governmental controls on ownership of real property. This will be a brief description because I'm going to dedicate an entire video to this topic alone. As we discussed, Fee Simple Estate represents the maximum number of rights or sticks that a private citizen can own in the bundle of rights in land. Now, there are four sticks that a private citizen can never own. The four rights reserved by the government include taxation, eminent domain, police power, and finally, escheat. Taxation is the right of the government to generate revenue. In real property, this revenue is generated through assessments, which is known as ad valorem tax. Interestingly, the U.S. Constitution precludes the federal government from taxing real property directly. That right is reserved to the state and local governments, such as state, county, districts, and municipal entities. Eminent domain is the right of the government to take private property for public use upon the payment of just compensation. The intention of this extraordinary power 
is to allow the government to take private property for the greater good. Yes, I just made a Hot Fuzz movie reference because I'm awesome. The Fifth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution guarantees payment of just compensation. No, the federal government can't just take your stuff capriciously. The process of exercising the power of eminent domain is called condemnation. Police power is the right of the government to regulate property in order to protect public health, safety, and general welfare. No, it's not the power of the police as in the men and women in uniform. This power allows the government to regulate real property for the greater good. Again, it's intended to protect the public. This power frequently presents itself in the form of zoning and land use regulations. SG is the right of the government that gives the state titular ownership of a property when its owner dies without a will or any ascertainable heirs. SG is not exactly a restriction, rather it is a way for the government to obtain privately owned property under these unique circumstances. The intent is to prevent real property from being outright abandoned because there's nobody on title. Each one of these controls can be a huge source of real property appraisal work. To recap, the purpose of this video was to describe the bundle of rights in real property subject to the four governmental controls on ownership. For more information on the governmental controls on ownership, you are encouraged to watch my dedicated video on this topic. Thank you so much for watching this video, and if you want to show your support, please hit the like button for the Google algorithm and subscribe to my channel.